Richter, who is no stranger to a lot of folks around this area. She's been, uh, even though she was born, uh, I think in Bennett County, South Dakota, uh, she's been around this neck of the woods for a good number of years. Doris, great to have you with us today. Thank you. <clears throat> now, the name Doris Richter is pretty well known, but I think around the museum, at least for immigrants like me, uh, when people talk about Ed Gardner, we know who Ed was, and uh, Ed to us was uh, one of the key founders of the High Plains Western Heritage Center. But Ed Gardner was somebody special to you. Yes, Ed Gardner was my father. And uh, we were talking earlier about uh, uh, Ed's involvement in the museum and uh, when that all started, but. Before we talk about that, I'd like to talk about you. You were born in, I said Bennett County, is that right? That is correct. And so, can you give us a quick, where you went from Bennett County, and because you've been quite a few places. Well, from Bennett County, <clears throat> we moved to Hardy County, to a ranch uh, about 12 miles northwest of Buffalo. And it, uh, we were neighbors with the Clarksons. Uh, and I went through, I think, the end of a seventh grade and eighth grade at a country school called the Cave Hill School. And then I went to high school in Buffalo and roomed and boarded there during the week and graduated in 1953. Now, your dad, of course, was into the ranching business, and you... Uh, you weren't an only child, you, you did No, have I had an older sister that was five years older than okay. me. So you're in Harding County and you graduate from Buffalo High School, 1953. Yeah. Three. Okay, and so what did you do out of high school? Well, three friends and I decided that uh, we wanted to go to Augustana College in Sioux Falls, so we did, <laughs> our freshman year. That was quite a shock to all of us because going from Buffalo to Sioux Falls was quite a change. <laughs> but, and of course, uh, we couldn't go home whenever we wanted to from when we got there. One of our parents, if you could believe it these days, one of our parents, hauled us and all our belongings that we needed for college down in one car, <laughs> <laughs> along with the three of us. But, but you were at Augustana just a short time, and then you saw the light, yes. and you headed west. Right. I decided that if I wanted to be a teacher, that I should be going to a teacher's college. So I transferred to Black Hills uh, Teacher's College at that time and uh, went to school a year here in a summer school and got my state certificate and then went to Belfouche where I taught for uh, four years. Now I understand you, you, you taught in Bell for four years, then you had a little expedition out to Washington State, uh, Kennewick for a year or so, and uh, then you, were, you came back. Yes, well, <clears throat> when I was in Belfouche, I met my future husband. But being uh, kind of a headstrong person, I had decided that I wanted to teach somewhere else. So my girlfriend and I went to Kennewick, Washington, taught a year of special education. And uh, my husband came out there, and we were married there, and came back to Newell, where he had a small place, and lived there until... 1961. Now, you did some more teaching. Can you just kind of quickly tell us, uh, until you get to Sturgis, you taught where in Whitewood? I taught three years kindergarten in Whitewood before I went to Sturgis in 1969 to teach third at, or fourth grade until 1995 when I retired. So you had a, a good long career uh, as an elementary teacher. Yes, I did. And uh, now, uh, I kind of skipped over, you also uh, had a family during that time. Yes, I did. I had two children, uh, 
before I started teaching as churches, both of whom I taught in kindergarten, <laughs> which they didn't always go, but they did. And then uh, I wanted to, con I didn't want to teach, they were going to be going to school in Whitewood, and I did not want to teach them again. So I moved to Sturgis because I wanted to uh, go to a higher grade, which I was more used to. So I did, and in 1974, my daughter Suzanne was born. Okay, so you did Mike, Pam, and Suzanne. Yes. And a, and a great career in teaching uh, for, uh, in Sturgis. And uh, that was from, I think we figured, what, 1969 to about 1995. That is correct. So you've been on the board here going on about six years, I think we reckoned. I think that is right. I came here first. In about, I don't think I volunteered the first year I retired. Probably 1996 is when I started okay. uh, volunteering over here because I had known... Uh, Leo Jacramento was the director here, and I'd known his mother in Belfouche, and um, I liked what was going on here. So I, and they were needing volunteers, so I came and volunteered. And that way, I became a lot more familiar with the activities of the museum. So your term on the board, you've had uh, some interesting times. Uh, what do you see for the future? I mean, the last two years have been pretty tough with this COVID. Where do you see us going? Well, uh, my hope is that we will be able to uh, expand the museum somewhat and that it will grow. You know, the other question I just have to ask everyone is, what do you enjoy the most? about the museum? I really do enjoy the tourists and their reaction to the museum. They are um, so interested in everything that is in here and talk about our displays uh, and how much they learn when they're here about the West. Well, Doris, our, our time is about up, but I'd like to uh, thank you for your service as a volunteer and as a board member, secretary of the board, as I understand it now. Yes, I am. And uh, we appreciate what you have contributed and the dedication you have to the museum. And thank you all for joining us. Doris, thank, thank you, you for being here. Thank you for the opportunity.